and his love for us is greater than anything in the whole universe. For God is love. Stand with me one more time, please. Lord, touch this woman. Strengthen her leg and her feet. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hold hands. I'm going to pray for every one of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, meet with your people this morning, Father, in their need. I pray, Lord, that your healing power and your strength will come into them to overflowing. Give them health and strength and healing in every way. In Jesus' name. Now, thank you, Father, for the bread from heaven. Feed us. For we need that life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I'm so glad. Good to see you, Ray. And Crystal. Good to see you. Good to see all you folks here. Can't believe people come all the way from London and France. But I've got news for you. The Lord knew you'd be here before you did. Amen. The Lord showed me a dream one time by preaching in France, different places in Europe. So here I am preaching to people in Europe. Yeah. It, just, it just amazes me. I don't know. I guess we're the international church. I mean. We ought to call ourselves international household of faith. I mean. Let alone all the folks that come from east and west here in America. It's just amazing. Me. But you know, I'm just a little country boy from the other side of the tracks. God called. That's all I am. But Jesus is everything. Amen. Amen. I'm here to lift up Jesus to you, nothing more, to point you to him. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles, if you want to, the book of Acts. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We've all been, we've all had this crud here, everybody in church, and we're getting over it. We're healing, Amen. Amen. So if I cough a little during my preaching, forgive me. <laughs> but I am recovering, Amen. I'm healed in the name of Jesus, and so is everybody else. So I claim the blood of Jesus for for every healing, Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Acts, the third chapter. Peter and, and, and John had met the man at the beautiful gate at the temple and gave unto him the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He had no silver and gold to give. He said, get up and walk. Amen. He took him by his right hand and lifted him up. And his feet and ankle bones received strength, and he, leaping up, stood and walked with them to the temple, leaping and walking and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. 
They were amazed at what had happened. So Peter began to preach to them, explaining to them what had happened, that the name of Jesus, this man was made completely well. In verse 25, he says, You are the children of the prophets, <coughs> excuse me, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquity. Now that word iniquity is corruption, perversion, wickedness, or malice. Perversion is what I would like to look at. I'm not talking about sexual perversion. I'm talking about that which perverts the way of the Lord. What does that mean? Well, whenever God speaks in whatever God is saying, we are to listen. If we're not listening to what he is saying, we are filled with iniquity. The worst thing that you could do, the worst sin, I believe, that you could commit is to not listen and not believe what God is saying. Amen. To become stiff-necked, hard-hearted, and unmovable in your way against the Lord. That's about as wicked as you can be. Regardless of your sins that you commit, people go on their ways doing all kinds of things, and why do they do it? Because they are rejecting what God is saying. Amen. And by rejecting what God says, you are not giving God the honor and the glory that He deserves. To give God the respect that He deserves as God. Let us never Find it in our hearts to resist or neglect or reject when God is speaking to us. That was the problem with the Jews at the time when Stephen stood up, who was the first martyr in the New Testament, and told the Jews in the Sanhedrin, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised of heart. Yes, amen. You do always resist the Holy Spirit. That was their greatest sin. We should never resist what God is doing. When Jesus came, the Jews were troubled. They were Many of them were uh, followers of Jesus, but so many of the Jews didn't know how to accept Jesus. They, did, they couldn't, they, they said, this is an amazing thing that's happening, but we don't know what to do with him. Some of them wanted to make him king, and others wanted to kill him. Jesus had such an effect on the people that uh, the majority of the people resisted him but Jesus came to do one thing he never raised his hand to harm anybody Amen. he never did one thing to destroy or to steal or to kill but he came to raise his hand to bless 
and to give. He said, the enemy has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you may have life in that more abundantly. God sent Jesus to bless you. How is it that people are so afraid, are so They have a heart to not be readily to be readily to accept what God is doing, but out of fear or out of their own traditional belief, they can't reach out as God is reaching out to them. When you know in your heart that it must be the Lord. Don't turn away from Him. Reach out to Him. Hallelujah. Embrace Him. When the eunuch asked Philip, after Philip explained to him what the Scriptures meant in Isaiah about Jesus, what must I do to be saved? He said, I want to be baptized. He said, you can be baptized if you believe with all of your heart that Jesus is the Messiah. And so the eunuch embraced Christ. He reached out to Jesus and embraced him with his heart. And he said, I do believe with all of my heart. If Jesus comes by and you feel something that is good and wonderful. You may not understand it all. It may be amazing to you. It may be something that you've never really experienced before, but it's not anything to shun. It's not anything to turn away from. It's something to reach out to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe everybody that goes to church anywhere in this world should be that way. When they go there, there should be Jesus that they can reach out to. I believe when the minister ministers the word of God that he should give them Jesus that they can reach out to him. Amen. Because Jesus came to bless us. Not to curse us. Not to condemn us. Not to put a spell on us. Hallelujah. But he came to bless us from heaven. He came to give to us that which we have never known before in our entire lives. Then only He can give. The blessings from heaven. And I would rather have the blessings from heaven than all that this world could give. I would rather turn my heart and my attention towards Him than to covet anything of this world. Why would I want to hold on to something that's dead and dried up and doing me no good when something's coming by that is full of life and full of spirit and full of power and full of love and full of faith and full of healing and full of deliverance and full of forgiveness? I want Jesus in my life. Brother Phil, you want to told me give you Jesus. I'm giving you Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. He came to, to turn us away from our iniquity. In other words, he came to show us a difference in what, excuse me, in what he has to offer us. I said he came to show us the difference in what he has to offer us. When you go to church, and you sit down, you listen to the preacher preach, or you hear the singing of the, the song sung. There is something that God is offering you. There's not, it's not bad for you, it's good for you. Amen. Don't be afraid. Amen. Open up your heart. Talk to God any way that you feel in your heart. 
You don't even have to say anything. Just speak with your heart. And he will hear you. Because Jesus has come by. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got news for the church. Jesus has come by the church. To bless you. To impart to you. To give of himself. Listen. Jesus is not just a historical figure that we read about. That we believe in. Listen to me. He's not just a biblical figure or some symbol hanging on a wall or some, something that in your mind, he is a living, giving, working, doing Savior. He's not dead. He's alive. I said he's not dead, he's alive. He's not dead, he's alive. He's not way back yonder 2,000 years ago. He's right here, right now. And if your minister's not telling you that, he's lying to you. Jesus is alive and real right now. And he wants to bless you right now. Hallelujah. He came by to bless us, to save us, to heal us, to forgive us, to give us peace of mind, to give us joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. He came to bring down from heaven that which the Father gives to all. Hallelujah. Freely and generously. Amen. Amen. God does not withhold any good thing from them that walk uprightly. How do we walk uprightly? I'll tell you how you do it. You believe on Jesus Christ. That's the only way you can be right with God is to accept what God has given to you. Yeah, yeah that's right. Ain't no other way. I accept, I believe, I hold on to, I search, I look for, I follow, I want, I desire the, the thing that God has given to me. Amen. To all of us. Amen. Amen. All right. To bless. What does it mean, to bless? He sent Jesus... To bless you. Turning away every one of you from his iniquity. The only way that we can. The only way. That we're going to receive from the Lord. Is to turn to him. Turn away. From self. To God. And it's not something hard. It's not something you got to sit down and figure out how to do it. Right? You just say yes. Amen. God, you told the truth. You're right. That's all it is. Yeah, that's all. You just, yeah, that's right, Lord, I believe. Yeah, amen, you're right. Hallelujah. The Bible said that all the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit working in you does that work. He causes you to say within your heart, amen. He causes you to say in your heart, so be it, Lord, so be it. God says, I want to bless you. So be it, Lord. I want to do something for you today. So be it, Lord. So be it. Yes, Lord. What is it you have for me? Yes, Lord. What is it you want of me? Yes, Lord. To me, that's a blessing. It's a blessing that God would see fit to pay attention and give consideration to even me. 
Now he made, he, made, he made the heavens and the earth and all that's in them, all the angels, everything. It's in existence. God made it. And yet he takes the time. And he, his love is so great towards us. Us little old bitty people. Turn around and look at somebody and say, little old me. Little old hard-headed, stubborn me. Little old me that can't, it's so dumb he can't see, he can't see the nose in front of his face. You can't see the good that God has for you, that God wants for you. You think of what you want's better when what God has for you is so much greater. You can't even imagine what God has for you. Why do we want to hold on to things that are dying when God wants to give us something that is everlasting? Amen. 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 If something's dead, it needs to be buried. What God gives to us is alive. Somebody says, what do you, how do you feel? I don't know, but it's alive. It, feel, it feels alive. It's alive. What do you have in your heart? It's alive. Praise God. What do you have in your life? It's alive. It's moving. It's real. Hallelujah. It's not something dead that I just learned about on Sunday. It's something that walks and talks with me every day of my life. It's alive. Jesus is alive. He came to bless me. I'm blessed. Somebody says I'm blessed to the Lord. I'm blessed when I get up in the morning. I'm blessed when I go to eat. I'm blessed when I lay down at night. I'm blessed when I'm sleeping. I'm blessed when I'm walking and when I'm talking. I'm blessed of the Lord. Jesus came to bless us. I wrote a thought down here to bless. It's the way of God for his children. Now he's got something else planned for the ungodly, but for you and I, his children, it is the way of God to bless us. If you're a child of God, he came to bless you and he's blessing you. That's the way of God. It is the principle of God for his children. What does God have for me? I don't know what it is, but it's awful good. I don't know everything that God has for me, but it's going to be good. The thoughts that he has, the plans he has for you is not evil, but good. Wouldn't you rather have what God has for you? That devil, he wants to steal it from you. He wants to come in and do his best to ruin your life. But he's a liar. He's a thief. And he is a defeated foe. And he's not going to steal from me and destroy and kill anything that God has for me. Did you hear me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the God that I serve. Let me tell you something. You cannot curse what God has blessed. You cannot curse what God has already blessed. Turn around and tell somebody, I'm already blessed. So there. I'm already blessed. So there. Hallelujah. I'm not going to settle for anything less than the blessings of God in my life. For Jesus came to bless us. Yes, he did. Praise God. Everything God wants for you is for your good. Even when he tells you to repent of your sin, he is thinking of your good. He's not 
trying to take anything away from you but to add to you. He wants to take away that which wants to destroy you and replace it with that which blesses you and builds you up and makes you strong and happy and successful and healthy. Praise God. And prosper in your way and everything you put your hand to do will be blessed of God. I said everything you put your hand to do for God will be blessed of God. And the devil doesn't want that to happen in your life. But so what? Oh, he's going to fight. The devil is going to fight tooth and toenail. But by the grace of God, we prevail. We overcome through him. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? All right. Everything that he asks us to do for him is for our good and our blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. You see, to be with God is a partnership. To be with God is to share and be partakers of his goodness. Amen. And we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We are workers together with God. Hallelujah. We are his children. We are members of his family, of his household. He is our father. And we are his children, but we serve him gladly. And so that everything that our father wishes of us, we do it gladly. Because we want to please our Heavenly Father, because He is so good to us. He is so good to us. And even when we fail, He still loves us. Hallelujah. Even if we don't obey Him from time to time and we fail in our obedience, He doesn't push you down. He raises you back up. And you know why that is? Because he considers your sins under the blood of his son Jesus. So that your sins are not counted against you for his blood's sake. Don't lose your faith in the blood of Jesus. The blood covers you. It doesn't give you license to sin. But God knows your heart. Amen? And we all fail, but God doesn't hold that against you. He looks at your heart. He looks at the blood. He says, I see no fault in you. I see no sin in you because you believe in my son, Jesus. And his blood cleanses you from all sin. Amen? So if you fail, say, Lord, forgive me and keep going. His blood covers you from all sin. Therefore, Praise God. Whatever God asks you to do, do it heartily because it is for your good and for your blessing. Now let's look at what 1 Peter says in the third chapter. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. <clears throat> Third chapter, 1 Peter, verse 8. <clears throat> Finally, be ye all of one mind, yes, amen. having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Oh, that's something we, a lot of us need to learn right there. How to be courteous. Have a little manners with one another. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen? Not rendering evil for evil. 
or railing for railing, but contrariwise, blessing. Knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Do you want to argue with one another? Or do you want a blessing? Do you want to be hard-headed, bull-headed, stubborn, rebellious, hateful, malicious, spiteful, holding grudges, can't forgive, They didn't treat me right. I don't. I deserve better than this. He should come and ask me to forgive him. <coughs> do you want to live that way, or do you want a blessing? Do not render evil for evil, railing for railing. If someone does you wrong. Don't get back at them, treating them the same way they treated you. But bless, knowing that you are called to bless. Why is it that I would bless you when you've done me wrong? Because God has blessed me. Amen. And I'm, going, I'm not going to let your anger and your sinfulness rob me of my blessing. <laughs> I'm not going to let our stubbornness, our argu argument of spirits, hatefulness and malice, I'm not going to let that rob me of the blessing. We are not called to argue with one another, but to bless one another. We are not called to fall into the ditch, grabbing each other by the throat. We are called in blessing. Amen. Amen. And what exactly does that all mean to us personally? I'm, I'm called in blessing. That means God has touched my heart. He's touched my soul. He's touched my mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's become so real to me and alive to me. And I know his love and I know his presence and I have fellowship with him every day. He's with me. Talk about being blessed. How could you be, how could, how could it be any better than that? Somebody said, well, I'm blessed because God got a million dollars in the bank. I'm blessed because I got a big gold mansion on the hill. I'm blessed because I drive the best car in town. I wear the best clothes around. You don't know what a blessing is. We live in the blessing of God. I'm not talking about temporal things. But eternal things. I would rather have 
the blessing of God in my heart and mind and soul. To know that he's with me 24 hours a day. Than to have all the gold and all the silver in all the world. You are rich in him. Don't be so concerned about material things. God will supply your every need. Amen. Amen. There's not anything that God will let you go without. If you, you will not, he will not let you lack. You will not want for anything. So don't set your heart upon the things of this earth. Set your affections on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. He knows your earthly need. But it's your heart that needs more than anything else. Your heart needs God. Amen. Jesus came to bless us. Where? Just stick it in there, Lord. away from our own sinful way. Amen. Thank God. Because my way leads to death. But God's way leads to life. No matter how much money I got in my pocket, it doesn't matter. No matter what kind of house I live in, what kind of car I drive, or what any, anything of this world, hallelujah, His way leads to everlasting life. Everlasting glory. That's worth more than all of my wishes and desires and hopes of this life. That's what he came to do. Hallelujah. Not to show us how to get rich quick. We went to Mar-a-Lago here a few weeks or two ago down there we saw Trump didn't get to speak to him but I wouldn't you couldn't pay me to live in that house <laughs> I mean you know that's a a fairy tale place the castle trimmed in gold <coughs> You know, I'm just a country boy. Like taking a country boy out of the country, putting him in the city, it just don't work. <laughs> Too big for me. That's okay for Trump. That's his world. But God has called him. I believe God has called him. But my heart is not in that. Jesus came. And when he blessed me, he says, I'm going to go to heaven. Now listen. I'm going to go away. I'm going to go back. And what are you going back for, Lord? I'm going to prepare a place for you. The Mar-a-Lago ain't seen nothing. <laughs> Amen. 
I'll prepare a place for you. Yes. And I'll come back and receive you unto myself. Oh, and where I am, <laughs> there you will also be. Oh, Is it worth the wait? Oh, yes. Is it worth the struggle? Yes. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Is it worth living for? Tell everybody we know. Jesus is coming back. And he's prepared a place for everyone who will trust in him. You will not die. You will not perish. But you will live forever and ever. And in this world, as long as you're here, you will serve him and love him and share him with others. The good news of Jesus throughout your life because you are blessed of God. How am I blessed, Brother Bob? The blessing of heaven the blessing of heaven is upon you and it makes everything clear and new and alive and thrilling and joyful and sometimes sometimes it's a hard way to go this world but through it all through it all you have peace with God and you have the joy of the Lord in your hearts and you can face the circumstances and you're not disheartened you're not discouraged you're not forlorn or in despair you're not falling down in the world. No. You're not lost in the darkness Amen. of this world. That's right. But you are living in the light Thank you, of his love Thank you, and of his care for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the kind of person that any moment now Any moment, you might start raising your start raising your leg up. Any moment now, you might start raising your hands up. Even in the midst of situations and problems and troubles, somebody might see you go. Hallelujah! You're looking down at the situation all around you, and they look at the situation. What's going on in there? He said, "Well, Hallelujah!" Because there's something going on in your soul. There's something going on in your spirit. There's something going on in your mind and in your heart that God has blessed you with. And you're strong in the Lord. Because he strengthens you with all might by his spirit in the inner man and you're blessed hallelujah how in the world could the apostles go out into this earth as they did bringing the good news of Jesus to the world for the very first time into, into foreign countries that have never ever heard. How do they do it? Because they are blessed of God. They are blessed. They have
have God's assurance, God's grace. They have all the confidence they need. They can face the world. They can face the new places they've never been, the new faces they've never seen, the many voices they're speaking out they've never heard. But with great assurance and great joy and great faith and power, they proclaim Jesus Christ and they speak it into that dark world and the light begins to shine why because they are blessed of God Jesus came to bless us somebody says I want to be a Christian then you want to be blessed I want to do what God wants me to do. I really do. Then you want to be blessed. It's a blessing to serve. It is a blessing to give all that you have to God. It is a blessing to yield your life to the Lord. And to bless his name. To bless him. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I want to lift him up. Hallelujah. It's like the song we sung this morning. You are the words and the music. Amen. Amen. And now I'll return to you the song that you gave to me. You've blessed me, Father, and I'm blessing you. Hallelujah. We are a blessed people. Coming and going, we're blessed. Hallelujah. God's in the blessing business. It's like I said, here. I said, okay, thank you, Lord. Here. He said, the Lord says, okay, thank you. Here. Okay, Lord, thank you. Here you go. <laughs> Amen. It's just a continual cycle with the Lord. Yes, it is. Amen. It's a flow. It's a principle. It's just an everyday thing with God. He's in the blessing business. Turn with me, everybody. Please. To Abraham, he said, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Don't let anybody tell you different. Don't let the enemy tell you different. Don't nobody lie to you. God is in the blessing business. He sent Jesus to bring the blessing. Hallelujah. If you have a heart for God, if you have a desire for God, if you have a longing to learn more of God, if you have a desire to draw nearer, to come and learn of him, then you are blessed. Yes, amen. 
You know, I've heard, I've had people say, oh, Brother Bob, I wish the Lord blessed me like he blesses you. <laughs> if you have a heart for Jesus, if something inside you says, oh, Lord, if your heart cries out to him, if you cry out to God, in the time of trouble or otherwise, if your heart is crying to God, you are blessed. Because there are so many who never cry to God. There are so many who could care less about God in their life. But if somehow you are moved towards God, you are blessed of God. And there's more blessing to come. Did you hear what I said? Hallelujah. Well, I'm blessed, and I know that I'm blessed. Jesus got a hold of my life. Well, I'm blessed, and I know that I'm blessed. He promised me a new life. Well, I'm blessed because He walks with me and keeps me wherever I go. If you happen to ask me, how are you, my friend? I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Somebody says, well, I need to go pray. I need to go pray and seek the Lord. You're blessed. Amen. It's a privilege to pray. Somebody said, I think I'll follow Jesus. You're blessed. Because it's a privilege to follow Jesus. Somebody said, I think I'll go down and read the Bible. You're blessed. And when you begin to read, you'll even be more blessed. You'll find out why it is you want to read. That's right. Start getting alive. Amen. Blessings of God. I'd rather have God reach down with his little finger. Stir it up. And just touch me. Hallelujah. I'd rather God just get a hold of me and just shake me up a little bit. I'd rather the Lord just get a hold of my heart and my mind and make me to know Him than anything else. I'm blessed. Don't be so concerned about so many things. Began to bless the name of the Lord and enjoy His presence in your life. And soon, all those things you've been worrying about and concerned about just start melting away. As because you know, as God lets you to know, He's got it all in His hands. All of your concerns and cares and worries, God has it in His hands. He had it all along. Hallelujah. And so instead of being burdened down, worried, and all down, you look you look bad. Somebody said, Brother Bobby, you're looking bad, boy. 
Something wrong? Something wrong with you? Something wrong with you, brother, brother Gene. You don't look so good today. What's the matter with you? See, when we get our mind on those things, it gets us down. We go, Begin to think about those things that God has done. Yes. Yes. And that everything concerning you concerns Him. Yes. Right. Your whole life, God is concerned with. Every little thing about your life. Every moment of your life. Every concern, every worry, every care concerns Him. So let Him take care of it. Let him take care of it. You're blessed. Troubles come, yes. Well, if I'm so blessed, why are they coming? See, you got your mind on the material things rather than the spiritual thing. You're not blessed because all the material things are coming your way. You're not simply blessed because everything's working out just perfect for you in life. You're blessed because it's in your soul and in your heart and mind. God is there. Huh? And as you learn that, as you live that way, hallelujah. God works out everything in your life. Look at the apostles, how they lived and how they won. They went. Paul says, you know, we're, we're troubled on every side. We're cold, we're hungry, we're doing without. We're sleeping out under the stars. Ain't got nowhere to lay down at night and sleep. We have a decent, decent bed to sleep in. We do without food a lot of times. We're beat up. We're treated like dirt. We're outcasts in the world. But God always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The message they had changed the world. It turned the world upside down. You want to do something about this old stinking world we're living in? I mean, we're living in pretty bad times, don't we? I've never seen it such like my whole life, the way things are today. Will make a difference? Just begin to rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Just begin to be glad in the Lord. Hallelujah. Just, just begin to say, Lord, I thank you for blessing my life. I thank you for all you've done for me. I thank you, Father, that you've never left nor forsaken me. Thank you, God, that you've met all of my needs. No matter what's happening in this world, God, you're with me always. And everything I need in my heart and soul and life, you supply my every need. I thank you for that, Father. Hallelujah. I'm blessed with you no matter what the world. If the world's going to hell, I'm blessed anyhow. I'm going to be with Jesus when he comes back. Yes. 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 Blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. And God will never, he'll never let you down. He'll never disappoint us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you this morning, Father, for your promise to us that you never fail that you sent Jesus to do all that he did for us at the cross and raising him again from the dead who is now seated at the right hand of God in heaven you sent him to be a blessing and to bless us hallelujah you have so richly and blessed, blessed our lives enriched our lives Lord. thank you Thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do and all that you've promised. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for everyone this morning, Lord, that they will continually be encouraged and their hearts be lifted up and let them always remember that you came to bless them, that they are blessed of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming today, being with us. Come so far. Can't believe they're coming all the way from France and London. It's just 
Well, we've had people here from, from uh, Norway and Sweden, Germany and Canada, and Australia, and where? Africa. South America and Africa. It amazes me. But the word of Jesus Christ is the most powerful word. The seed of God's word, which is a seed, is the most powerful seed, the most potent seed most fruitful see. and I see God doing the work in so many lives my prayer for you this morning is that you will take this word with you when you leave here today and go home I want you to remember I'm blessed yes. even if you're burdened down with, with, with problems right now and something's concerning you and you've you got, you got a, lot of, a lot of concerns right now a lot of cares just remember you are blessed of yes. God you're blessed in your soul and your heart and mind. Your spirit is blessed of God. So begin to rejoice. And thank God. He's going to bring you out. Whatever your trouble, trouble is, your problem is, He's bringing you out. Just continue to rejoice in Him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Bless your people. Keep them safe on the road or journeys back home. Bring them home safely and if it be your will that they come back again and visit with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Shake hands. Be friendly. Love one another. God willing, come back and see us one more time. Amen. God bless.